It has been a dog's age since I've done any DIY suspension training equipment, and for good reason. It's because ever since falling into the NOSC rabbit hole, I've found that their equipment's so well designed and it's so cost efficient that it kind of seems silly to do a DIY setup. Nonetheless, sometimes it is fun to just kind of experiment with stuff and see what you can come up with, and sometimes you can unlock some functionality, which is exactly what I did with my latest model. The basic, most rudimentary setup literally only uses three parts, yet it can give you most of the suspension functionality you may need, and it should run you probably, I'm guessing around $15 or so. Naturally, you have your DIY handles made out of PVC. These are made using a special process that I outlined in a different video. I'll link to everything and all the resources down below in the description. But uh, it, these are my special type of approach that makes sure you don't have any rough edges so it doesn't cut into the rope. And it also has a nice grip textured surface that doesn't require any sort of tacky tape and stuff that falls apart over time. It's a very simple approach and it works very well. And then the third piece is a single length of not necessarily climbing rope or outdoor utility rope. I believe it's five or six millimeters and it's 14 feet in length. Of course, you can make it the own uh, length that you want. And uh, it's got a breaking strength of uh, a lot. I believe on the website, they say it's got a breaking strength of over a thousand pounds. Not a big fan of using things like paracord that can be only a few hundred pounds. Not durable enough in my opinion. So I know it may not look like much, but that's the point. It's extremely compact, can even fit into your pocket, and it's very versatile in the way that you can use it. All you do is throw the middle part over some sort of an anchor point, like a pull-up bar or something, pull the other end through, and then you have your two loose dangling ends, or you can just simply throw it up over a out of reach anchor point, like a high tree limb or something. And then to attach your handles, you simply use the bowline knot that I used in my bowline trainer from many <laughs> videos ago, and that's a cinch knot, so the more weight you put on it, the tighter it's gonna hold, but it's also a quick release, so it's really easy to undo it, adjust the height to where you need it to be, and then cinch it back up for most any type of suspension exercises you're gonna need to do with it. You even have a bit of a foot suspension design with this, where you take the rope, and instead of running it through the handle and back up with the bowline knot, you run it through the handle twice. And this gives you an adjustable loop at the end that locks in place the moment you put weight onto it. So that way it's really secure for doing things like planks and uh, handstand work and stuff like that. It's not the most comfortable way to use it. It's probably fine if you're using like a heavy set of like boots or uh, shoes or something. But when using it barefoot can be a little bit of more of a pressure point against bare skin. Nonetheless, it does work. It does work when you're on the road, but I've got an option for better foot loops that I'll explain in a little bit. And as far as versatility of anchoring goes, uh, you do have the ability to just simply sling it over something, and you are having a single anchor point setup, which works pretty well for most applications, but sometimes you want a wider setup for pressing moves, particularly with dips. And there is a way that you can manage that with even a single piece of rope. You just simply attach it to the bar as you normally would, and then on the right side, you throw the handle over the bar, through the hole, and then over the bar away from you, and then through it again, and now you have a double knotted anchor point set up that you can adjust the width of, so it's not impeding and rubbing against the shoulders in an uncomfortable way for things like push-ups, dips, and having a nice wide anchor point for things like chest flies. So this simple DIY suspension setup works pretty darn well, but there are ways you can even expand upon this with some very basic accessories. The first of which is, of course, a simple door anchor. The original design gives you two of the three possible anchor points, both within reach and out of reach anchor points, but the door anchor is something we'll have to add on, and this I just simply made with taking a length of nylon strap and tying a simple knot into one end, and that knot serves as a very good sturdy door anchor, provided you don't have any gaps or something in your door frame, and you just run the suspension ropes through that end, and you have a good door anchor. It is something that kind of slides back and forth, which can be handy for making sure that the handles are nice and level and even. But if you wanna do exercises that require more weight on one arm, what you wanna do is kind of put a knot in the rope close to the door anchor. That'll give you the ability to load more weight on one handle without it slipping and shifting around on you. Another accessory that I recommend 
are these. These are called simple slings from Strapworks. And again, links to these are down below. These are half inch wide and they have about a half inch or three quarter inch eyelet on each end. And they're just a basic simple nylon strap. What you could do with this is run it through the handles twice as we did previously with the rope. What this gives you is a much more comfortable set of foot slings that still work perfectly well for all of the foot sling and foot suspended activity you might do. Plus it also gives you a nylon strap that can be touching your forearms because the ropes can be a little bit tender on the skin if you're not pulling in enough with pressing moves and this makes it more comfortable. And then last but not least, an accessory that's kind of fun to play with is a simple pulley. This is one of the advantages that comes with using rope trainers and it opens up a little bit more possibility for some fun exercises, things like single arm pressing and rowing are some of the most common ones where you'd have one arm anchored towards your side and you can press on one side. It gives you some more options for unilateral work that's not quite as twisty and torquey, which is very common with suspension exercises. It also gives a little bit more of a balance and stability component because you really have to kind of stabilize between your two sides. Uh, this is just something I picked up at the local hardware store. Not sure what load limits and stuff are on this thing. So, uh, you know, use it at your own risk. I don't really know if this is the safest of options. If you find a metal one, that's probably going to be better for you. But it is nonetheless something fun to play with when you're using rope instead of things like knots and straps and stuff with hardware associated with it. At the end of the day, this thing is designed for simplicity and versatility. The downside though is that because the setup requires tying knots and stuff, it is a little bit more cumbersome to make adjustments for it. It's usually more practical for workouts that I've done where I'm only doing one or two suspension exercises and other things are with weights or floor work or something like that. But nonetheless, it is a lot of fun to work with. And if you're looking for something particular saying, I don't have a place to do pull-ups, I don't have any sort of options to improve my calisthenics training beyond the floor or the wall, this may just be the ticket. Let me know if you have further questions down below that I can answer in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Be fit, live free.